You are listening to the Mark Guzman Podcast Experience. Plus, but this is Bay Area, so you know, you can't really be divorced in the Bay Area unless you're rich. Um, yeah. So we're just unmarried, so to speak. <laughs> you know, we still do a lot of stuff. But yeah, it's uh, I want to get to that point where I can just rely on comedy in the next three months that's the time frame i'm giving myself yeah now now comedy i mean it's for most people it's really tough to even think about getting up on stage and just making people laugh i mean you're telling jokes right Mm -hmm. but then there's also the idea of what if i'm not funny what if i bomb but sometimes that comes down to the actual crowd itself it's not always you and your comedy that sucks it's really the crowd. I mean, it kind of it's a two way street. As a comedian, I would like to say it's ninety nine percent nine the audience's fault every time. But as a realist, I have to say this is probably ninety nine point nine percent my fault every time because like I don't like to get into the to the game of blaming crowds when I have a bad set because sometimes I just didn't put the effort in or I didn't take it seriously enough. I didn't think this crowd was going to really, I thought the crowd would be easy and they were like, no, we're not giving you easy laughs tonight, which is kind of like, you can't be mad at them. I mean, they paid money to see a show, so they kind of want to be entertained. And if you're half-assing it a little bit on stage, they might not be completely entertained. But then there's also those factors of, you know, you're doing all Republican crowd and you got anti-Trump jokes for days. Yeah. You know, now there's some comedians who will go up there and do that, and it just it just is a disaster because they get mad at the crowd for not agreeing with them. And then you get comedians like myself who will go up there and just do it to antagonize the crowd at this point. Like, oh, yeah, I don't care about your feelings. And then what happens is a lot of times in that situation is they don't care about your feelings either. So you guys have this mutual connection of like, well, shit, we don't care about each other. Let's have fun, you know, and they laugh. You can laugh at it. You know, it's it's all about how you use it. Um, but, yeah, there's, like, you know, material, uh, you know, all kinds of factors that go into, quote, unquote, bombing. I mean, every comic bombs. But, you know, I believe, you know. As, now, now, when you bombed. I don't bomb. No, I'm just kidding. Bomb. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Yeah, I mean, when, when you bomb, because, yeah, every comic talks about you always bomb at some point or mm-hmm. even multiple times. How do you then use that to then fix your... It's like bombing. Bombing, <laughs> bombing is is two ways to handle bombing. You can either let it let it bother you, or you can just act like it's not a big deal. I kind of I'm in the middle sometimes, depending on what the bomb was at. Like for the most part, I laugh off bombs. I'm like a quarterback to those interceptions. Short term memory. I'm gonna have to get back out on the field tomorrow. You know, we had a bad game today, guys. You know, let's uh watch the film, regroup, come back. Um, you know, that's why. You, Technical comedians should be taping, recording their sets because it truly a bomb can happen in a split second. It could just be you not reading the crowd for a split second. Mm -hmm. You know, like I've gone from having a great set, like you do a ten minute set, eight minutes, killing them, and then that that eighth minute coming, you say one thing, and they're like, "Mm, "No," Mm -mm." and then you spend the rest of the two minutes. Trying to figure, trying to get them back, and they're just like, you should have stopped at the eight minutes, you know. But it happens, you know. Or you could come out. I've seen comments come out. <laughs> First joke, but then they might point it out, or they just go into the next bit, and then, it's, okay, you know, all right, you brought it back. You know, it's it's a it's an ongoing struggle. Um, it's like you know, an older comedian, more a well respected comedian, tell me, don't be afraid to bomb, because. If you're going up there saying, I don't want to bomb, I don't want to bomb, chances are you're going to bomb because you're thinking bomb. You're thinking, I'm bomb, I'm going to bomb, I don't want to bomb. But if you go up there like, fuck these people, I'm going to have a good time. Like, I've done shows where I've done jokes where the crowd was just not feeling it. And I, they laughed at the fact that I was like, you know what, I don't really care if you guys like these jokes. I do this for my therapy. And they were like, oh, okay, we get it. And then you just like, don't give a shit. And they see you're having fun. You know, another, another well-known comedian told me, Always smile on stage. Laugh at your own shit. Don't be afraid to laugh at your own joke. Because sometimes people see you laughing at it, Like, and it's true. I've been to comedy shows where the joke wasn't that funny, but the way the comedian reacted or one person in the audience does that, just like there's nobody laughing, and all of a sudden one person goes, ha! Ah! 
and that will make me laugh about the joke because I'm like, oh, okay, that's funny. You know, it's it's all an energy thing. Yeah. You know, your energy can affect the crowd's energy. Like when I host, I tell crowds, hey, this is a live performance. This means you guys are as much part of the show as we are. If you guys give us some really dope energy, we're going to give you a really great show. And crowds feel like, oh, okay, I could do that. You know, you know, and it's like I was just, you know, like – Little mind games you play on the crowd, like you know, you say, "Hey, you guys ready to start the show?" And they go like, "Yay!" And you go, "Come on, guys, you can do better than that. You ready to start the show?" And then they're like, "Yeah!" And you're like, "How in that split second did you guys just go from like hey to like yeah? Like what in your mind? What triggered in your mind that just say, you know what? I wasn't giving my all. You're right, man. We can't do better than that. I'm sorry, dude. We were just trying to you know give you a little bit, but let's give it all. You know, like what in that." One second of doing that. That's very interesting you bring that up because of all the comedy shows I've been to, most of the time they do that, and I've never even thought about that. Mm -hmm. Like what goes on in your mind to just say, yeah, you know what, I could do better. It's a challenge. I think it's the challenging. They're saying you could be better, and you're like, yeah. Or it's like, you know, the challenge of, oh, oh, you don't think I can do better? I'm going to show you, and then they, you know, and then the the key is fine is trying to get them to the point where they go off the first time every time. So that's the trick, you know. But as shows go on and people drink, energy changes, you know. By the third coming, they may not be as enthusiastic because they're drunk or because they're tired or because the last two comics sucked, you know. Bad comedy will drain the crowd, you know, and then make it harder for everybody. So it's all all an energy game. So what's been your favorite place to perform at? Um, right now, there's this little spot in San Francisco. Thank you for listening to this podcast short. For more podcast content, be sure to subscribe to all of our podcast channels on YouTube, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Libsyn, CastBox, Podbean, and literally anywhere else you listen to podcasts.